What I'd like to start with is just who you guys are and what role you play, kind of like your personal journey to being a part of the team. Um, because JR couldn't be here, right? Right. <laughs> but there's got to, there's a whole team around JR at this point, and so um, we'd love to know who you are, Rhea, and how you got to be part of that team, and also Luis, how you got to be a part of it. Um, okay, so I'm Rhea, and I run the Inside Out Project and help manage the JR Studio in New York. Um, our team in New York is pretty small, and he has a much larger team in France, which kind of runs his artworks and a lot of, um, kind of all of his pastings and all the logistics for that, and we do mostly just United States and then the Inside Out Project. Um, I heard JR speak, I guess, in a similar situation like this uh, a few years ago. And I was in between jobs, I had a history in the art world and was looking for a little bit more meaning. And um, I just had a lot of free time, so I just started showing up at the studio every day and uh, <laughs> would not leave. And um, it kind of caught on to an internship right when Times Square was happening. I don't know if any of you guys were here for that. Um, two Did years anyone ago participate now. or go check it's that out? Years, huh? Yeah. Um, so I <coughs> interned for that and then kind of just took on more and more responsibilities. Everybody that works for the team started as a volunteer and intern, and so it's very organic how we all grow. Got how many people in New York? Um, with Inside Out, uh, it's me and a few interns and then the director, and then downstairs where Louise works downstairs, we also helps a lot with Inside Out. Downstairs is where JR's artworks are made, and that's about four people. So anywhere from like, you know, five to 10 people in the office in one day. Where's the office? It's in Alida. Okay. There's a secret location. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and Luis, how did you get involved? Well, I start, well, I'm Luis from Colombia. Anyone from Colombia here? Yes. Yeah. Cool. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. So <laughs> really? <laughs> <good>. <laughs> awesome. Great, great. Well, I was living in Miami and I was uh, helping this nonprofit in Guyana working against uh, domestic violence with kids. And they use the Inside Out Action. So I know about JR since that time. Became my idol, the TED Talk, like super inspiring. And then I started following him. And they went to Miami to do the Inside Out Action called 11M, related with immigration reform and diversity in America. And I just keep traveling with them like for three weeks or a month maybe. I decided to move to New York, and I got the opportunity to be part of his uh, team for the fine art. And I kept like working on helping new inside out projects with communities. And I did one myself in Colombia, in La Guajira, which is with the indigenous community. And it's been like amazing, inspiring opportunity, you know? That's it. Wow, great. Um, let's go through, now let's go through some okay. of the pictures, just in case anyone, I don't think, in case anyone's not familiar, or maybe we can stop and talk about some of them. Sure, yeah, feel free to stop me at any time. These are obviously JR's work, so you can kind of tell the beginnings of what is inside out with the portraits, and this is face-to-face -face in Israel and Palestine, which he talks about in a lot of his um, speeches. Uh, this is Women Are Heroes in Kenya. Um, so you can see him starting to play with portraits and that kind of being his format. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, <laughs> um, the TED Talk, him looking like a goofball. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is where it all started in 2011. Um, you guys saw mm -hmm. the whole making a wish to turn the world inside out. And so this is kind of the beginnings. This was on the High Line. These are pictures um, from North Dakota. It was the Native American tribe that wanted to make the statement that they still existed. It's a tribe that's dying out and there's not many of them left. Um, so JR was actually there in the beginnings uh, kind of cultivating the project and he took this picture to the High Line. There's still one on Mott and Prince, or Mulberry and Prince. You can see just their building in front of it, but it's this, a similar image that's still there. Um, this is in Israel, this is Yala. Um, this is a photo booth action. So as we kind of mentioned with the photo booth trucks, this was one of the very first ones where we take the project to the streets and kind of um, just take 
whole bunch of photographs at once and print them and, and paste them immediately with our team. Um, these are some more images uh, from the beginning of the project. So this is when JR got a little bit more creative with uh, the ways that he was using the portraits. This as well. And this is in our documentary. I don't know if any of you have access to HBO. It's still on there. Um, we're hoping to release it internationally online sometime this year. Is it called? Inside Out. It's just Inside it's just Out. Called Inside yeah. Out. <laughs> Um, this is an amazing project, one of our favorites, it was in Malawi. Um, it was a group of fishermen that wanted to bring awareness to the mistreatment of, of their craft and um, how they didn't get paid enough and kind of their rights. And they took these beautiful photographs, put them on the cardboard, and were just boating around with them. And the pictures are amazing. Uh, if I'm going too fast or you guys just, you know, whatever, just let me know. This was in the North Pole. Um, so a friend of the project and a strong advocate of ours was doing an exploration, a trek, if you will, um, with Save the Arctic. So they were trying to make a statement that we need to conserve um, this piece of land and be kinder to our environment. And so they decided to take thousands of portraits which were uploaded online and they collaged them um, to make this eye that they took as a massive flag on their expedition and like had it in a sled and carrying it around in the snow. Um, and they took this picture in the North Pole. It's another one of our favorites. This is a self print that was in Australia. So you can kind of see how people can get creative with um, the posters either collaging them in a way or pasting them on things that are not walls. Um, this was done, we didn't even touch these pictures. Uh, so they took the photos themselves, they printed them themselves. And that's completely fine if, if they send us the pictures, we'll put them on our website. This action was about um, a location where it had the highest suicide rate for teenagers. So they wanted to kind of bring awareness to that. And, um, and there's some really beautiful pictures of the community coming together and kind of being playful around the the shipping containers and bringing more celebration to it, which was really lovely. This is a recent one, um, which is Syrian refugees. And this is another self print. So you can see the portraits in this case are very small. Um, and this is a photojournalist that's kind of just taken the project and running with it. And it really goes to show how we're just merely a platform for people to to use a visual um, kind of outlet to bring awareness to different things. And so he started to hop around the world to places in need and he wants to bring a project to everywhere he goes. So we're really excited about what he may do in the future. This is a really fun one. This is another self print in New Orleans. Um, this was a project where the, the guy that put it all together, his friend, found out that he was dying of, um, of a disease and he wanted to remind people to kind of seize the day and enjoy life and, and remember why we're here. And so he did some really playful faces and blew them up huge and put them all over New Orleans. And this one's a really great one in the garage. This one you might see um, and recognize. It's gotten a lot of publicity. Uh, this is called Not a Bug Slap. So this is in Pakistan. And this is a girl whose family was killed by a drone, um, a drone attack. And so they blew up her poster big enough so that drone operators can actually see her face on their screens. Um, the whole idea is that drone operators apparently call um, people that are killed bug slats because when they are viewed on their screen, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to bring, you know, humanize what these people are doing and, and realize there's a girl here with families. Um, and it's actually on Google Earth, this image. So you can see it on Google Earth. This is one of our photo booth trucks. This was in Amsterdam. This is a, a photo um, exhibit kind of fair festival. And you can see once the truck's involved, the process is sped up. And we have our team there of people that have been pasting for years. Um, this is our French team, so they're especially um, proficient. They've been with JR since the beginning. So you can see they just like kill it. They just have a lot of portraits um, and it creates interesting installations. Um, that's actually me. <laughs> that's uh, the 11M trip that Luis was mentioning. We took two trucks, so we 
had the um, the truck from Times Square, which you'll see pictures of as well, and then we built this one in uh, California. Half of our team flew out to California and the other half stayed in New York and started just traveling with the trucks. So we drove all around to, I think, over 20 major cities um, in a road trip, basically li living out of this truck in hotels uh, for almost three months, which was insane. Mm -hmm. But we were trying to take pictures of illegal immigrants and um, kind of the locals of each of these cities to bring awareness that there are 11 million illegal immigrants here and something mm -hmm. needs to be done about it. Whatever it is, um, something needs to be done. So that was a really powerful action. These are some kids that were in LA. You can see the, the photo booth truck prints out the poster immediately. So it works like a photo booth, but it prints out the, um, the portrait, which is like five feet tall and three feet wide out of the side of the truck almost directly afterwards. So it's really fun for the kids to get involved. This is Times Square. So this was in 2011. Um, it was right after Hurricane Sandy, and um, this was actually done by our team. It was our idea to kind of, we went to all the different areas that were affected by Hurricane Sandy and uh, tried to bring those spaces into the center of New York and what is considered to be the craziest, you know, most famous, but all the New Yorkers hate it. So how do we like kind of rebrand in a way um, Times Square and challenge the branding and advertising that exists with art. So we were there for three weeks every day for about eight hours and took tons of pictures of you know fans and randoms and tourists and everybody and um, pasted them on the ground. And you can see the other truck there um, that we used in the background. This is the Pantheon. So this was fairly recent. Um, this is a very specific project where the uh, the French, I guess, government wanted to start renovating a lot of its monuments and bringing more, more awareness to their history. So they had JR come in and um, they took the trucks to a number of different monuments, I think nine, and ended up at the, at the Pantheon. And these are all of the portraits that were taken that were cut out, uh, as you can see, just, just the face so it doesn't have the background and collaged. And this is on the ground. And there was also um, some in the ceiling, and then there was also an installation on the dome, which is under construction for the next few years. The piece on the floor and the ceiling are gone, but the one on the dome will be there for the next few years. So if you go to Paris, you'll actually get to see it. This is more from Times Square. So we actually took over what they call the midnight moment, where um, there's like, I think, a minute, um, right at midnight on certain evenings during a month where they replace all of the ads with images. And so they replaced a lot of um, inside out images, which was really cool to see, it, you know, combating all of these advertisements in the middle of craziness. Um, kind of just an example of how organic things happen. We were in Times Square for three weeks and the building owner that owned this building that was gonna be torn down um, a few months thereafter said, you know, we've got all this scaffolding up, do you wanna just use it? Um, get a bunch of portraits up there. So they, we had our team come in and do overnight with a crane and they killed it and just paced the entire building and then took an eye and put it on the billboard on top. Um, so that was just continuing our, our effort with the New York action. This is another photo booth action. Again, our French team is way superior. <laughs> um, and this is in Wuppertal, Germany. These are just some portraits. You can kind of tell, we always say to make a strong face so you can see the range of what that might mean. It's funny when you're in Times Square, you can see maybe there's a wedding there, a bunch of weddings. People take phot photographs in Times Square, which I don't personally get, but okay. And they, uh, they would take their, their pictures of the photo booth and then you could place them next to each other and have them interact actually on the installation, which was very cute. This was our most uh, probably recent uh, impactful action, which our team also did and was our idea to do the Millions March um, for Eric Garner here in New York. And we took his eyes and blew them up and uh, a person is behind each of those, those um, posters. And we marched for, yeah, almost all day with those just to try to bring awareness to that issue and what's going on. I think that's it, yeah.
So just, you know, an idea of what's going on and what we've been doing recently <laughs> and, and kind of what we're about. I don't know if that's Great. Really good yeah, enough for you. Fun. So, I mean, where to start? I mean, there's so many questions mm -hmm. I have about how you do this. Like, how, how does an action happen? Like, what does it take to get one of these projects running? How long does it take? Mm -hmm. um, maybe you could give, maybe Louise, you, did, you said you did an action in Colombia. How big was that one? And mm -hmm. what did it take? How many people? What was the scene? Depends how big you want to dream, you know? <laughs> it's like uh, you feel connected with some community. You empower the community. You make a statement related with that, with a, with a need, with a purpose, whatever that the community wants to share, wants to communicate, and then you start sharing it to the to the same people. And just taking the pictures and it's like magic, you know. It gets bigger by itself. Seeing the because of an image or your face, and you are supporting something. And it gets like viral by itself, and then we just print the pictures, and people wants to help, paste them, and want to know more about the subject that you're trying to expose, and that's it. So mine was like almost just two, three months. Mm -hmm. I was here in New York, and an indigenous girl that it was studying photography in Bogota started like getting along with the situation, and a profit wanted to like help her to get the pictures taken. And she just went to this uh, exotic community in the middle of nowhere in Colombia, and she started like, taking pictures of the indigenous community. We printed, and then I went back there like, a month like later. There's a helicopter doing crazy yeah, was, stuff. Yeah, was super what? crazy. Man. I'm from Colombia. I never <laughs> was in a place like that ever in my life. What so. do you mean? What kind of place was it? It was like, um, in the middle of the desert, in the north point of Colombia. It's in La Guajira, that's the, the state. And it's in the border with Venezuela as well. And this community is very nomad. Put it like nomadic. Say. Yeah, they pass around everywhere. So you can like really like know what it's, what it's about. And they had a lot of needs like hunger. They never rains there. They're very like apart with their reality. So we all realized that. And, they start like promoting their needs and try to make the government and the people knows about that they need more help, more knowledge about the reality, you know, healthcare and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's what start happening. And how do you uh, who makes the decision about when an action is gonna be taken at this point? So they everything's in their hands. Literally Who's we, they? Uh, whoever creates it. Okay. We just print. That's literally all we really do. Like we will walk <laughs> you through it and we'll talk you through it and that's fine and you know, help you try to weave your way through, but it's really up to you. You can make it like three thousand, you can make it five. So it can either be really easy or it can be really hard. It also depends on the permits for the walls. Some people encounter a lot of issues for that. Other people just know the guy in the corner and they're like fine and they just, you know, paste it. So it really depends, but it's, yeah, it's, it's up to them. They tell us, hey, we're doing one, we want to do it in April. And so we make sure to ship them their portraits by then and, and that's, yeah, basically it. And we just put the pictures up. Yeah. Do you guys want to start asking some questions? Anything pressing? Yeah. I have three questions. Um, <laughs> Let's start with one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, then I'll make it a combo question. <laughs> um, have you ever returned to the communities that you work in, and what's the results? Like you said, you know, the aim might be to promote them getting healthcare or, you know, a bigger goal. What, what's sort of just been the result of a project that you can talk about? Um, well, yes, definitely, least... definitely it's a lot, they get a lot of visibility, definitely right away. And, and, People get like a sense of like commitment about whatever they're doing as well. Uh, I mean, a lot of community union happens when when they make an action. It was like surprising. It wasn't like the purpose of the action is uh, an artistic intervention, basically. And like Rea say, is like something that the people makes. We just guide them and just make make sure that they keep the guidelines, but. But we are not like directly involved. You just put the tool for the people to use it. 
So a lot of things that I wasn't aware happened in a good way, like the visibility, the government uh, definitely wanted like in this specific point, they want to give some walls, give some spaces to paste the action. And there's certain campaigns to looking for food. And I mean, a lot of free media start like coming out. So it was like a crazy, it was very interesting, very good. So it worked in a good way. May you tell us more about this relationship with, between, I mean, people in La Guajira or other places in Colombia and South America uh, are indigenous and they have no uh, relationship with the image that we have, you know, because we, every day we take selfies, we have Instagram, we have uh, cell phones, uh, cameras, so what is, how would you describe this relationship of them with this, the image and the photo? The photo that well, uh, the first place this this girl just went by herself with her camera, and she in the indigenous language she started like uh, sharing what was the statement about you know, we pretended like to share to the world their needs, their cultural richness about the indigenous community to the world, so. Because of that, people start like uh, letting use their faces. Because you know, some indigenous community doesn't like to get their pictures taken because they think that it's taking their soul. Something like that. This case, she just did it. Whoever the people approved to do it, we have a, a release form to to allow us to make the action possible. And then when I arrived with the images, people were like surprised in a good way to see themselves. The pictures actually, we use a big picture of a uh, chamana, you know, like it was like a master person, very important person for the community in the pictures. And I met her, and it was like pretty neat, it was very positive action to see their faces because of uh, showing their needs. And then we went to Bogota, we went to Rio Hacha, different cities to replay the. The action itself and to transmit what is happening, you know. I have a question. I mean, this is so most of the statements are political. Not really. Not some, all. Some of them are. Okay. Well, I feel like a lot of the impactful ones, because they bring more attention, mm -hmm. there's plenty of positive ones that are just celebrating being happy or yeah. celebrating creativity or, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're not always political. Okay. Is there any, has there been any backlash or any? I mean, some of what impressed me about the TED Talk was the courage mm. that JR demonstrated in those early days. You know, those projects were pretty, I mean, he was going into places, you know, war zones or, you know, places with great conflict and doing things that might be against the law. I mean, there was a lot of risk taking involved. Is that, has that, uh, is that part of the ethos of the group? Is there... <clears throat> I think in a way it's kind of instilled in the project of standing up for what you care about and what you believe in. So that might be very dangerous depending on where you are or what it is that you care about or believe in. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely been backlash. I mean, there's been protests with the posters. Um, there's been, you know, even if you see the documentary, which is actually great, you guys should watch it. Um, there's a piece where they're in Tunisia and it's right after the dictator was overthrown and they started, it was the first pictures of regular people they had seen at all in, in Tunisia on the walls. And so there's a lot of controversy between the people of, you know, this is our face, this is Tunisia, the, this is us. And then the other people saying, why would you replace the dictator? The dictator, you know, we're not the dictator, we're not the photos. And so it's creating a conversation and that's what it's about, that everyone has a right to their opinion. People were tearing off the posters and JR was there and he was like, let them do it. This is great. Like, this is what we want. We want you guys to talk about it because this is an issue. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the art being there and being beautiful and making a statement. It's about those questions that are coming up and creating a debate or mm -hmm. yeah, getting, getting deeper with it. Mm -hmm. I thought that was, it seems like intuitively he has understood that from the very beginning. I mean, the word open source like, you know, as applied to technology, mm -hmm. like comes to mind with this project so much. This reminds me of 
the 92nd Street Y presentation Henry Timms gave about the new power and just this free, this distribution of, of meme, you know, mm. of just putting the power in the hands of the people. It's just really incredible. It, it feels like, like you're both sitting there like it's the most natural thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> But it feels like there, I mean, it's got to, I mean, it has some, maybe it is the most natural thing in the world, but, you know, may, is there any moment be. when you worry that be. someone's going to abuse the images or, I mean, how do you handle that, that openness of the project? I think we do have legal, a legal backbone, okay. you know, basically whenever someone sends us the portraits, it's known that we have the rights to use that on our website. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess there is a lot of trust. We just haven't really <laughs> encountered many issues of it. I think it's just such a happy project and it brings healing and awareness. And, and I mean, sure, we've gotten a few emails that are a bit aggressive, but you know, I, yeah, that is great. Awesome. I haven't really even thought about that. <laughs> Maybe it's just easier to be creative than destructive of art. Yeah. Unless it's about the baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to be mad when it's a picture of a baby smiling on the wall. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to throw a fit? Was there, uh, was there any one of these particular projects that had like a call to action paired with it or something? What? Describe I mean, a little bit know, like, more about call to action. There's just like a bunch of pictures of these faces, and then maybe like next to it is like, um, go here for to to do something, like visit this website or stand up for this, or I don't know, is there anything like that? Um, well, it's really <laughs> up to them, and that's a piece that we kind of don't participate in. So they might. I mean, there's plenty of of things that are driven towards a cause that kind of is sistered with some sort of other nonprofit or some sort of direct driven, you know, force. But um, most of the time it's supposed to just be the portraits. And, you know, go to the website if you want to know more. There's actually a, a, a link on the bottom that goes directly to the site. Um, and if it's the photo booth, it goes directly to the portrait. So you can see exactly what's going on. But yeah, it's more just about the art kind of smoothing over all of that. That's actually what I like the most about it. Like, it's not too concerned with it's just just putting it out there, and then what happens happens. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Like Did you hear it related to that in the talk? I love the piece when he said, um, <coughs> with some some man was saying, you know, what is it was complaining? Like, what is what's the point basically? And, and someone said, we've been standing here for two hours talking about this project, yeah. and in those two hours, you haven't thought about what you're going to eat tomorrow. It just felt like so, you know, that, that kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. like, exactly, yeah. Um, I saw a hand over here. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the um, Eric Garner piece and the margin? Like, that was such a powerful image that mm -hmm. we saw everywhere, and it was such a painful, it is still a painful moment right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that sounds more like you were, you were more involved in that, or you were marching with that. Can you talk about how that came about and came up with the idea to just use the uh, his eyes and sure. Well, this was this was more of a collaboration, I guess, with Inside Out team and Jr. It wasn't necessarily an action, what we would call like a group action. Um, essentially, we just started creating brainstorms where I try to get everybody together. Louise comes up from downstairs, and we just talk about what's going on and maybe how we can get involved or you know bring more awareness to things or just reach out to people. And we had heard about the march just as New Yorkers and um, you know kind of young people living here and we really wanted to participate and do something so we were brainstorming all these things trying to figure out how to take portraits and blah, blah, blah. and JR just happened to be in the studio which is a rare occasion and he was listening and we kind of were like Jay what do you think and he just said just do the eyes mm -hmm. so you know this is very <laughs> of course. Um, and the eyes are very much yeah. his kind of MO so that's why it's not quite inside out. Usually we want the full portrait unless you're printing by yourself. You can do whatever you want. But um, this is just a very special case that it ended up being really powerful. And being there that day was incredible. And uh, just marching with them. And then it was really beautiful because the crowd kind of took them into their own. So we had recruited people like friends that came and helped. And then um, random people would offer to hold them. And then we just kind of let the crowd take them. And we don't even know where they ended up. But um, 
Yeah, it was really nice, and uh, I, we made the cover of the New York Times, which was crazy mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then following that, the Je Suis Charlie, the team in France decided to do kind of a similar action with the eyes of um, Charlie Hebdo, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really powerful. That made like the front page for a lot of stuff, which was surprising, but really, really great. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it wasn't quite inside out, but it was kind of the spirit of inside out and us just taking advantage of us having this printer and like, you know, being in New York and just running with it. Can you tell, um, there's, there's often, um, it comes up this uh, conflict between these images and advertising. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit maybe about anything you know of JR's philosophy or the project's philosophy or just generally about like branding, advertising, marketing? He doesn't do any branding. Like there are no names associated with the project, with him. Um, we're very cautious of that. That's one thing that is kind of our backbone and our structure when people reach out and they say, hey, I'm with this NGO. We're like, that's great, but you know, this project has to be about your cause. It can't have your name on it. I'm sorry, we just can't endorse it. Um, so he hasn't done any endorsements of any kind, and he's very, very strict on that. Um, and his artworks pay for everything. So he doesn't, you know, get any sponsorships. The artworks that Louise and the team make, and then some of the photographs he takes, and some of the works from France, they pay for everything. Salaries, trips, oh. everything. Okay, that was going to be one of my questions. Yeah. Where the money was coming from. Okay. Um, two questions. Okay. One is that I really, really, really love this project. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, how. and the second um, is, is there something in Alice Island? Or, and I was wondering what is that is. That's a JR project. Okay. So that's part of his Unframed series um, where he takes archival images and repurposes them back into the space. So he's gone to m multiple different cities and taken old images from the city and then put them back onto the walls um, in kind of innovative ways. And with Ellis Island, he took pictures from actually the immigrants coming through and he's put them back in the abandoned hospital. So you can do tours of the hospital. I think it's sold out till March, but um, there's like hard hat tours of the, it's really cool. It's a creepy old abandoned <laughs> hospital that's decrepit and falling apart. And then it's like an artwork that you walk in as if it's a ghost there so it's like a series he's working on and to answer your first question yes all of you guys can be volunteers <laughs> we love that uh, we have a list I mean I don't know if you want to get like emails or something yeah. and give them to me but we send out whenever we do a truck action or if something like Times Square happens again if we have a pasting and we need extra hands mm -hmm. we'll send out emails um, and you guys are it's, it's very open we're very open so yeah yeah, um, well, I, my question was around money and where you got your resources, but in addition, I was wondering just what your biggest obstacles are, um, if it's access to additional hands, uh, money resources, um, and if you are planning to grow or um, if he's just sort of planning to be sustainable and just continue funding through his own art. Um, we're figuring that out right now. Um, you know, we were only supposed to run for a year. The TED Prize only is supposed to last the project for a year. So we found outside funding, and then with every poster that we that we print, we ask for twenty dollars per poster if you can afford it. And if not, we'll work with you and whatever your budget is, or if you need mm -hmm. free posters, we'll send you free posters because the, the money kind of just rolls over in that way. Um, but yeah, we're approaching our fourth year, and so we're kind of redefining and getting back to the roots. So we're trying to get much more meaningful actions back in the mix and do things like this. And we're trying to kind of re-inspire our team. And I forgot the other part of your question. Um, that was... That was mostly much, it? Yeah. Okay. It was about, it was about like growing your obstacles. Like what your biggest obstacle. obstacle. Oh, yeah. I think it's reaching the areas like where Luis went. Like he was very lucky that he grew up in Colombia. He had a contact there. You know, he knew of this indigenous culture from whatever way. It's hard for us to reach. One of our goals is reaching all the countries in the world. We've been to over half and now it's just small islands and very, you know, tiny locations. And it's hard to reach them and, and trying to think of a, 
a way to bring the project in a, in a way that they need um, to different locations. So how do we outreach to those countries that are like, you know, don't have access to cell phones or Instagram? Um, so I think that's probably our biggest obstacle. Do you have like a follow up of the project, like of the impact? For example, in the Australian project, do you know what happened with the suicide rate and stuff? Or? You know, I think we, we've been trying much more, especially recently, to, to kind of cultivate that process. In the beginning, it was kind of just like, you know, posters are great, you know, getting it out there and then just letting them kind of take it. Um, but we do want some of those responses, so we're reaching back out, but we can't really keep track of the impact of each one. I think certain ones do have a greater impact and maybe that is communicated to us, but sometimes it's hard to tell, you know. Um, I would love to know more about that, but it is, these. everybody's busy that all these people that are creating actions, sometimes it's it's really hard to get back in touch with them and, and hear how how it turned out months later. We hear at the time, we see the pictures and it's all a very big celebration, but you know, months yeah. later, how did it impact? Um, yeah, it's it's hard to kind of gauge that, but it's action to action, different different degrees, I think. I don't know, what what do you think about that, Louise? Like, how? Yeah, it's always been complicated to reach out what happened after, because uh, I think it's the same like philosophy of the project, you know? It's like just a tool to communicate made by the same people. So we cannot like see after and then sometimes it's difficult to manage that or to measure it. You know, like for example, the one in Guyana was amazing. I still know about it because I, I'm close to them. These people like teach the kids to use the cameras mm. in order to make the action happen. And then the kids start like <coughs> writing whatever happened to their stories and they make a short film and everything started with an inside out project action you know so it was magic again so they're still using it now mm, actually they're planning to mm -hmm. use again the posters uh, related with the sexual harassment mm -hmm. in in the in georgetown mm -hmm. so it's great it was one of the first actions i, I believe it was like in 2011 it was like 600 posters or something so mm -hmm. it's very strong, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely important, but that's not really how we measure our success, I guess, is the, is the answer. Our success is really just more people standing up. It's not, you know, that's that's kind of the tail end of it, but it's people engaging with it is what we, we really are looking to see. So I have a question about, can you have a um, I had a question about, you know, he was very clear that this is art and, um, and now it feels like you're sort of teetering on the brink of being a business in a way. I mean, some of the challenges you're facing are about, it sounds like growing as a business, it's like being a startup in a way. Is, are they, is there any, is that, um, I mean, I guess the two can coexist. Andy Warhol <laughs> did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, is there any sense like, I mean, is this still art? Are they actions? Are they projects? Like, how does the art still fit into the picture now? I think the art's the, the heart and the center. I mean, I think it, we wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for the art. And that's what drives everything. It drives the funding. It drives, you know, the engagement and the people coming in. And, of course, money has to be involved with whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a sad fact, but um, that's not... You know, as much as you may get caught up in emails and the actual like administrative part of it, it's it's about talking to you guys. It's about taking the truck out. Like that is that's the project. So I think I I hope we haven't lost that. I don't I think it's I don't think it's lost us. Yeah, definitely. We will be having ball like mm, thinking about commercial stuff for money. It will be done by now. Right, right. Yeah. It's like that's the spirit. You know, it's yeah. just are nothing else involved. Mm -hmm. Just express to the people to use it to express themselves or something that matters. Mm -hmm. That's what really matters. Okay, at what point did JR transition mm -hmm. to facilitating 
It just is with the, the inside out. I mean, when, when Ted gave him the award and he had to create a wish, it was this. So, you know, when I think it's everything that we do, I keep using the word organic, but it's the only way that I can really explain it. Everything that happens, it's like once there's a need, we figure it out. So there was a need for a team. He hired a few people and just got started, and it's kind of evolved from there. Um, he still does his own artwork, and that's his main focus. This is kind of just like a beautiful thing that's spurred from his artwork. Um, he's not really involved with it anymore, and it's funny because it's actually better that way. Um, if he shows up, people always want him to come and, and go to the action and, and, and speak, and I understand that completely. But once he shows up, then the media starts talking to him. It's about him and his art and his involvement, and the whole idea of what they're trying to do and communicate is lost. So him, he's very separate from it now, and it's, it's just kind of run through. I mean, really, as I said, we, we just like, answer emails and print <laughs> and like put pictures up, but most of the hard work is done by everyone else. All right. Any other questions? I want to ask you guys like, what's next? Anything you can talk about or anything you, what's your wish, your Ted Prize wish? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, recently, as I said, we're trying to really get back to the roots. And I, I really want to get more engaged with New York and the community here because we we are here. We have the resources here. Um, we're still trying to reach some of the small countries. If you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see us kind of shouting out for that every once in a while. Um, yeah, and just engaging more in the issues that matter right now and trying to bring healing through through art and through this platform. Mm -hmm. I, we and like you people, uh, yeah. we invite you to like use the tool in your country, in your community, to stand up for whatever you Next wish door. for. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we'll print for you. <laughs> That's great. Make some printer. <laughs> I'm curious what the capacity is for, how many projects do you typically do in, you know, in a year or a month? Or how do you it depends on the seasons. Um, pasting right now, as I'm sure you can imagine, would kind of be a nightmare. It's very cold outside. Um, Since the glue freeze? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's actually just as worse when it's really hot. Like, okay. Pasting in Vegas was not fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, it depends. I mean, I think we can, we can probably print a few hundred a day if we're only focusing on that. Um, the photo booth prints 30 pictures an hour. Mm. So it, it really just depends on on that. And as far as funding, as I said, you know, the, the posters roll over and then we JR will sell an artwork that will um, fund kind of the salaries of the team and the and the other other expenses. So that's that's how it's built. Hey, I have a question about um, do you have to get permission to post stuff up? or is it is it legal or that's up to you um, <laughs> so we have had a lot of people post illegally most people do not um, just because it's safer yeah that's that's completely up to you so talking to the building owner sometimes the building might just let you um, paste on the wall sometimes you have to get approval from the city um, there's a lot of governments that have a lot of paperwork associated with that so it can complicate it um, but yeah, it just depends. Good, we want to hear it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much yeah. for being here. email addresses and yeah, give them to you. Yeah, or, if you guys want to start projects or get involved on here, whatever, we're just yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.